what is an S-Corp and why would anybody care about it? Yeah, so an S-Corp, it's a little bit of a misnomer. There's actually no such thing specifically as an S-Corp. So when you go to file a company, there is a corporation and you can file a corporation and then there's a tax election, what they call an S-Corp tax election or an S-tax election, which changes the way that corporation is taxed. You can also do the S tax election for an LLC. Either one, you need to file IRS form 2553 to change the tax election of either the corporation or the LLC. Essentially what that S tax election does is allows you to potentially up to a certain threshold anyway, but potentially lower your self-employment tax. Self-employment tax or social security, Medicare, Medicaid, all that, or I group it together and call it social tax is 15.3% of your first hundred and th for this year, 147,000. So if you make, if your salary is exactly 147,000, you pay 15.3% of that, um, which is roughly $22,000. If you make a million dollars a year, you still only pay that 22,000 because it's capped at a threshold of 147 for your social tax. If you make 50, then you pay 15.3% of the 50. So the benefit for someone who has that S Corp tax election is if you make more money, you can pay yourself officially a lower salary and you only owe the social tax on the salaried amount. So let's say you made 200,000, but you pay yourself a salary of 50. Instead of paying 22,000 or 15.3 on the 147, instead of paying 22,000, you're gonna pay about 7,500. So 15.3 of the 50. So you save, what is that, roughly $15,000 in tax by being an S-Corp in that scenario. So it is good for smaller businesses that are domiciled in the U.S., like contractors, to have an S-Corp tax election. If you make a lot more money, let's say your business makes a million dollars a year in profit, like net taxable profit, like your bottom line on your tax return, S-Corp tax election doesn't do you a lot of good because you can't the IRS is not going to allow you to pay yourself a really low salary um, because it's not an equitable salary for the CEO of a company that makes a million dollars a year. For example, you make a million dollars a year, but you still want to pay yourself a salary of 50K. If you get audited, the IRS is going to disallow that and force you to pay yourself a salary equitable to a business making a million dollars a year. And in that case, you're probably going to have to pay yourself a salary of 200, 250,000. And then you're going to pay the social tax up to your 147 anyway. So it becomes a moot point to be an S Corp at that level. But if you're earning, like your net income is under, I don't know, let's say 250,000 ish in that ballpark, you can basically pay yourself a lower salary of something less than 100,000. If you made 250, maybe you pay yourself a salary of 75, and then you basically cut your self employment tax in half. Which is which can be obviously very beneficial. So it matters on the scale, the size of your business, if whether or not having an S corp tax tax election matters. So if you were making, if you were an LLC, and you wanted, and you made a million dollars a year, there's not a lot of advantage to having an S corp tax election because you're still going to pay that social tax up to your 147 in salary anyway. So you, but if you're making a million a year, there could be some advantages for you to be a C corp. And by the way, you can also have a C-Corp tax election for an LLC. You can basically treat your LLC like a corporation for tax purposes. That is also a possibility. So anyway, S-Corp tax okay. election, if you're under a certain threshold, it makes a lot of sense. Over, maybe it's not so relevant anymore. Is the only benefit the tax savings or are there other benefits? Nah, that's it. Oh, okay. And then... And, and it's only on your personal... Uh, social tax as the owner of the business. Okay. So like you're going to pay income tax on your total net income. Let's say your net income is, let's say 147. You're going to pay your income tax rate, your state and federal or federal and state. If your state has a state income tax, you're going to pay federal and state income tax on the 147. But on top of that, you pay the social tax of 15.3% on your salary up to 140. And that's the only advantage of an S corp tax election. It just saves you on only your as the owner's self-employment tax. So that's what I mean. It's really, if you have a company with a hundred employees and you're making a million dollars a year, this is, you don't really get any benefit out of the S corp tax election in, in this scenario. You might be better off being a corporate, a C corporation in this okay. case. 
So yeah. talk to me about C Corporation. So is that another tax election or is that an actual company structure? And that is a company structure. So corporation, okay. if you just if you register a corporation, the default is C Corp. And then right now, your federal tax rate at the corporate level is 21%. And then you, depending on the state you're in, you may or may not have a state corporate tax as well. So the way that works, let's say you make a million dollars, you pay 21. Let's just talk about federal because we don't need to dig into each individual state because every state is different. Some states don't have any corporate tax, like Wyoming, for example, or Nevada, a few others. I think there's 10 or 11 states that have no corporate tax. But um, basically, if you make a million dollars a year and your net taxable corporate profit, that's after you paid yourself a salary, after you paid all your employees salary, after you paid benefits, everything, now you're left with a million dollars a year, you're going to have a $210,000 corporate tax and you're left with 797 of net taxable income that you can retain in your company, or you can pay it out as a dividend. And then personally, and this is where what they call double taxation comes into play. And then personally, you, depending on your income level, but most likely at this level, you're going to have a, a dividend tax that's either 15 or 20% on your dividend, let's just say 15%. Um, let's say you paid yourself a salary of 100,000 and then you gave yourself a dividend of 100, you would pay stuff, you would pay the normal payroll tax, self-employment tax uh, and income tax on your 100,000 salary. That would be a taxable expense to your corporation. So it reduces your taxable income, but then you pay the personal income tax on that income you receive. And then whatever's left after tax income, you can pay yourself the 100,000 dividend. So keep in mind, you've already paid 21% on that money. And now you pay yourself a $100,000 bonus after tax. Uh, and then personally, you're probably gonna have a dividend tax of 15%. So effectively your tax rate is 36% on that dividend if you're a C Corp. And if you file as an S Corp and you paid yourself a hundred grand, you paid social tax on that hundred grand. Whatever was left over, is that taxed as just as income tax? Only? Or, yeah, or, ordinary income, right? So let's say your company made two hundred thousand, but you made a hundred of it your salary. So you paid the social tax, the fifteen point three percent, or uh, self-employment tax on that hundred grand, so fifteen k. Then you'd pay your Personally, you'd pay your federal and state, if you're in a taxable state, you'd pay your federal and state income tax. And then now your company has another 100000 left over in profit after your salary. Now you would pay only your income tax, your federal and state income tax rate on that additional 100 So no social tax on the next 100 And so right now, what would that tax rate be? In the two hundred thousand total example, around around thirty percent, roughly. Okay, so it's very similar tax rate, whether you're the money's passing through to you as regular income or you're taking a dividend as a corporation. Yeah, but as a C corp, keep in mind after you pay your corporate tax, you can retain earnings tax deferred in the company. Okay, so you don't have to distribute it to yourself or whoever. It can just right, and you can reinvest it. Okay. Maybe you reinvest it in other assets. Maybe there's a million things you could do. You could open a brokerage account in your company name and go buy stocks and bonds. Maybe you got a bunch of friends who have businesses and you make loans to them and you your company makes loans to them. So you're not distributing the profit. Now you will make you at that point, your company will have to pay tax on let's say the interest on those loans you make to your friends, or if you invested in stocks and bonds, you, the company would pay capital gains and dividend tax rate on that. But the capital itself can be retained in the company tax deferred. So it allows you to, if you want to do that, you can reinvest that deferred income in, through your company and grow your wealth that way. And that's one of the big advantages of a C-Corp. Okay. In that example. So with a C Corp, you basically get like an extra 15% of 
of your money that you keep as long as it stays in the company. Right. Yeah. Like I said, it, it's a matter of scale. If, if you're under, let's say 250,000, probably better to be an S corp depending on the situation. And this is why you really got to talk to your tax advisor one-on-one because there's so many variables that go into this. But if you make a million plus a year or something like that, maybe a C corp is better because maybe you don't want to pay yourself all of your net profits as a dividend. Maybe you're like, I don't need $800,000 a year to live. I want to leave. I want to pay myself a salary of 200 and leave the other 600,000 in the company tax deferred. And then you can grow that 600K tax deferred by reinvesting it through the company. So that okay. would be one of the big advantages being a C Corp, but you've got to get over that income level hump for that to start making, making a lot of sense. So off the top of your head, can you define three groups of people like, or of contractors, construction companies, when you would want a regular LLC, when it might make sense to look into filing as an S Corp and when it might make sense to look at structuring as a C Corp? Sure. So most of your like small mom and pops, you're a handyman and maybe one helper, you're a plumber with one van and it's you and your apprentice and one, two, three people, your income is probably going to be in the low six figures. In that scenario, I would say either um, an LLC with the default tax election, or you might want to consider an LLC with the S Corp tax election. And then I'd say up to in the ballpark, 250, 300,000 in net taxable income. Yeah, I don't mean revenue after all expenses paid, after you paid any salaries that you might have, after you paid for all your equipment, all your leases or property or whatever. Net taxable income, if you're in that 250, 300,000 dollars range, I would say up to that, it definitely makes sense to be uh, an S corp. And then beyond that is when you should start thinking about maybe being a C corp at that point. Okay, cool. And if you're a big company, let's say your net taxable is over a million, I think you should start to seriously consider being a C corp because then there are other advantages. It's going to be easier for you to get funding, like growth funding, like credit lines and if you're raising money from investors and maybe you've got like a really great niche in plumbing and you want to franchise or open 15, 20 locations or something like that, you're going to need funding to grow. And being a C-Corp is going to help you a lot with that because uh, lenders and, and investors and that sort of thing are going to look more favorably upon a C-Corp when they are investing in your business. And why is that? A lot of it, I think, is just perception. It depends on how they're coming as an investor. If they're coming in as an equity owner in the business, they definitely are going to want a C-Corp because it's cleaner and easier for them to have shares issued to them, and they know what they're getting. They can vote based on the number of shares they own. They can affect board decisions to issue dividends and stuff like that. So that's one Big thing why they like C Corp, it's just easier and cleaner for them to own shares. Whereas in an LLC, you have a lot more flexibility and the manager has more direct control over the management of the entity. Let's say you're an LLC and you bring on half a million dollars from one investor. Maybe that manager is, or sorry, member in that LLC, maybe by investing six or what I say, $500,000, maybe he or she becomes 60% member in the LLC. But if it's a manager-managed LLC and the founder owns 40% and is the manager, that member that owns 60% doesn't have a lot of say in what's going on. So whereas shareholders come in and they can vote based on the number of shares they got. So anyway, okay. there there's a lot of reasons why investors prefer, especially if they're equity owners. And then there's some other legal reasons if they're debt if they're investing with debt, because if you are, um, let's say, if you're a corporation and you take out loans and then you go bankrupt and your company goes bankrupt, your debtors are in uh, 
position in front of your shareholders to get paid back first. So that's another reason why corporations are like creditors, lenders, banks, uh, not banks so much, but like I'm talking lenders that do big like credit lines and investors and that sort of thing. They would prefer you to be a corporation because it secures their interest in the business. If you go bankrupt, they want to be the first one to get paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So let's say somebody sees this video and their business has grown over the last few years from a couple hundred thousand in profit to over a million in profit. And they're thinking, maybe I should look into this restructuring as a C-Corp. What general advice can you give people as they're thinking about and starting to make this transition? Yeah, first, they definitely need to be talking to, if they're at that level where they're now net taxable seven figures, they should have, at a minimum, they should have a controller in place. Um, controller in the sense, of not a, a kind of a step below a CFO, but a controller. They should definitely have a controller in place. A controller should be in daily contact with their CPA to start thinking about these things. And then they need to get some legal counsel on the right time to make the switch. And it's going to be messy. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. If you're switching from an LLC to a C-Corp, you, you can't convert an LLC to a C-Corp. You basically create a new entity, new EIN number, open new bank accounts, sign new contracts, all this stuff. You're basically starting. It's basically you're starting a new business. You're rolling one business into the other. So it's going to be a hassle. It's going to be messy, mm. but the ad advantages could be pretty significant. Okay. And so if somebody was maybe starting a business now and they fully intended on it being a C Corp, would it be better just to start that way? Even when they're small? Yeah. Okay. yeah. If you, let's forget about the nature of the business now, but if you've got an opportunity that's big, you expect this thing to blow up in the next couple of years, it's going to be less hassle for you if you start it might not be for the first year or two. It might not be advantageous for you to be a C-Corp initially, but later on, it just makes it so much easier for you down the road if, if that's what you're aiming at. Okay, cool. So back to the S-Corps for a minute. We talked about the advantage of an S-Corp or filing as an S-Corp because it's not an actual company structure. It's mainly the tax savings. What are the yep. cons? What are the downsides to doing that? For a location-based contractor in the U.S., not really. There's not really any cons. It's just you only have the benefit kind of up to a certain threshold. And then beyond that, it's not so much of a benefit. So you, let's say you're an LLC taxes and S-Corp and you're making $200,000 a year. There's advantages. You can pay yourself a salary of fifty, maybe $70,000. You get a big savings on your uh, self-employment tax. And, but now your business grows and grows. You're making half a million a year. You've increased your salary up to, let's say, 120. So you get a little bit of a savings on that self-employment tax, the 120 to 147 or whatever the new threshold is at that time. You get a little bit of a savings, but you see what I'm saying? If you're making half a million, it's not the IRS is not going to consider it reasonable that you pay yourself a salary of 50 grand. If you get audited, they're going to come in and say, you know, we're going to recalculate and they're going to look at what somebody running your business would get paid if they are hired as a manager and say, mm -hmm. okay, if we look at this job ad and we say running a business of this size, how much should a manager be paid? Okay. He gets paid a hundred thousand. Boom. We're revaluing your salary to a hundred instead of 50, which means you got to pay more on the self-employment tax. So you can't, that benefit starts to get less and less interesting over time. And now you're making half a million you know, or more. Your salary is 150. You don't really have a tax advantage anymore if you pay yourself a salary of 150. There's no downside to it, really, mm -hmm. but you lose the upside benefit. Any last minute points you want to include, or is that pretty much sum it up? No, from what we discussed, S Corp, C Corp, LLC, default tax status, I think that pretty much sums it up. The main thing we did discuss it on our last video, but the, the main thing is under no circumstance should you be operating as a sole proprietor, especially as a contractor, because um, as a contractor, you're creating risk every time you step foot into another person's home. 
you're creating risk anytime you're doing something like roofing, replacing windows, landscaping, plumbing, all that stuff. You're creating risk every time you do something there. Like plumbers, you could screw something up, right? And flood somebody's house and cause huge damage. So you're crazy to be operating as a sole proprietor in that scenario because if you cause major damage, you're putting your entire net worth at risk from that damage you caused as a sole proprietor. You got to limit that to your company. Then, now, on top, you should also have liability insurance. I think nowadays, if you're a contractor operating without liability, you're going to have a hard time getting clients anyway because most of your clients are really going to want to see some sort of proof of insurance. Maybe some people don't ask proof of insurance if you're a landscaper and you show up and, hey, I'll mow your yard for 100 bucks a week or something like that. So but you should absolutely have liability insurance, but under no circumstance should you ever operate as a sole proprietor. It's too risky. I would say no matter what business you're in, it's too risky. But when you're doing things like going to people's homes and like using equipment and heavy machinery and those sorts of things, you're just adding on the risk factor. Like every one of those adds on your risk factor. So you got to protect yourself. I agree. Thank you very much even, for your time, Bobby. I would even add it's a bit irresponsible not to. Yeah, do it. definitely. Like, especially if you have a family, you're putting your entire family, your family at risk by losing everything in that scenario. So it's an irresponsible thing. Anyway, you're right. Thanks for your time. Adios.